Hey guys, welcome to the part 4 of my video series on creating a serverless REST application using AWS and the Python programming language. So in the last two videos, we explored AWS Lambda and the API Gateway. We created both of them manually through the console, the AWS console and then integrated them manually as well. Now there are a couple of problems with this approach that we followed. Number one, you have not saved the list of AWS resources and their settings that you want to create for your application. So you're not actually documenting it in a proper way, which might affect you later, right? And the second problem is that for every deployment of your application, you have to repeat this manual process, which is prone to human errors, right? So this is where AWS cloud formation comes into picture. So we'll be using this AWS product called AWS CloudFormation to model and provision our cloud infrastructure resources. In this video, we are going to get a brief overview of how to work with AWS CloudFormation. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so as I said earlier, AWS CloudFormation will let us model and provision all our cloud infrastructure resources. Now we need to understand how it will do that, right? So first of all, let's talk about modeling. So by modeling, I mean to say that I'll be providing all the information about what all resources do I want to create on my AWS account to AWS CloudFormation. Now in order to tell that, we need to have a particular language through which I can communicate with CloudFormation, right? So for that, CloudFormation has a CloudFormation template language. So the CloudFormation template language can be written either in YAML or the JSON format. So we'll be creating a template, a kind of a template. We can call it a CloudFormation template. We will be providing that to CloudFormation in which we have specified all the resources that we want to create. And what CloudFormation will do is that we will tell CloudFormation to start provisioning those resources by reading that template. So CloudFormation will read the template. It will provision those resources on our behalf. So instead of creating all those resources manually, now CloudFormation is creating those resources for us. So this is a very foolproof way of doing this because now um, you have code, you have codified all your cloud infrastructure because now it's, it is available in a kind of a template, right? So now uh, any kind of change that you do, you can keep a, you can document that. So that's uh, the basic uh, idea behind CloudFormation. So now what we're going to do in this particular video is to see how to create a CloudFormation template and then how to provision uh, a CloudFormation, how to provision our cloud infrastructure resources. So let us get started with that now. Okay, so on my console, I'm going to search for CloudFormation or in recently visited service, it is showing me CloudFormation. So I'm just going to click on that. So here we have CloudFormation console. CloudFormation dashboard basically and here we can see that I do not have any stack. So what is a CloudFormation stack? So basically you create a CloudFormation template where you have specified what all resources you want to create and then a stack keep tracks of all the resources that it has provisioned, right? So in this way it works. So now um, let us try to create a new stack. So First of all, it is asking me how do I want to provide it the template. So I can use a sample template or I can create template in a designer. Designer is a kind of a UI, but I will not prefer that. So template is ready. If I say that, then I have two options. I can provide either the S3 URL of my template file or I can upload my template file. So I have already created a template file for you guys. So let us check it out. So here is my template file. I'll be providing the link for it in the description of this video below. So so the format of creating a CloudFormation template in YAML format is a bit like this. So I prefer YAML format because it is much easier to read as compared to the JSON format. So in the YAML format, what you have to do is this first line is specifying the template format version. So it is quite obvious. Then you are, you are providing the description of your CloudFormation stack. After that, under the resources, you are going to specify all the resources that you want to have. So currently I want to have, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to have seven resources in my CloudFormation stack. Basically, I want to provision seven resources. So the first resource that I have is a sample API. Let us see what it is. So sample API is a, is an API gateway REST API. So it will be creating a REST API for me and I'm calling it sample. So it is as simple as that. So either I can do it manually through the AWS console or I can just specify it and tell CloudFormation to do that for me. So I am going with that option. 
another thing that i've created is an uh, api gateway method so here what i'm doing is i so this is the type right so now one point is that you might be thinking how do you know that what all you have to write here right so for that what you can always do is you can simply search for cloud formation let's say api gateway so let's say you want to search for api gateway lambda or you can just search for cloud formation lambda right or let's go with api gateway first of all so cloud formation api gateway so cloud formation api gateway and now you're getting the docs for it so in these docs you will see what is the syntax so this syntax you can follow so it is saying that first of all you need to specify the type which i have already done then in the property section you have to specify all these things so some of these might be required some of these might not be so depending upon your needs you can specify them or not so yeah so now here what we are going to go with is in the now i'm going to create an api gateway method for my rest api so what i'm doing here is that i'm specifying that i do not want any kind of authorization for now the http method should be get and let us skip this part for now the integration part but in the resource id i am specifying like which api gateway or which api gateway rest api we are talking about so we are just referencing that so we had called it sample api right so we are using this exclamation mark ref to refer to that particular thing so in this way it is working so it is as simple as that so let's move ahead then we have sample api deployment so in the last video we saw how to create a deployment of our rest api created using api gateway right so once you do that only then you will get an endpoint so that is the same thing that we're doing here we are creating a we are creating a deployment for our rest api so here i am just referencing my rest api right and i'm giving a name to my stage so it is as simple as that so this is also done then i have my sample lambda so this is my lambda functions um, cloud formation template so here i have specified that i want a lambda function in the properties in the code part i can do it in two ways i can either provide a zip file so in the zip file i, I am specifying my code so that will be provided as a zip file to cloud formation so this is one option another option is to provide the s3 bucket and key of where i am storing uh, my code in s3 which is simple storage service so that is another product by aws so that is also an option then in the handler you have to provide the path to the function which needs to be called in your code so by default index is the name and then dot handler is referencing to def handler so the name of this python file will be index.py in which it is handler function that i want to call and then in the role so now we are going to talk about the lambda execution role uh, but before that we have specified the runtime also as python 3.7 now in the role let's see how our sample lambda role looks like so this is my lambda's execution role which we talked about in the second part of the series so here um, in the policies i have given it the policies to uh, take action on cloudwatch right so by this it will be able to publish the logs so this is as simple as that and this is my log group that i created i specified that it depends upon lambda which means that i want to create my log group only when only when my lambda has been created successfully and then its type is here in the properties i'm giving the name to my log group which is slash aws slash lambda slash name of my lambda function so yeah so this is quite simple and then here it is uh here i provided a lambda permission um uh, for um I provided lambda permission to my api gateway to invoke my lambda function so that is what is happening here right now so yeah so this is as simple as that i have just created a very detailed and a very simple at the same time a cloud formation template and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just gonna uh, pass it on to the cloud formation stack here so i'm gonna choose the file i'm gonna go with template.yml and next here i have to provide the stack name so let me call it sample stack for now and then next uh, i can provide a lot of different things but they do not matter for now so just going with next and finally it is asking me to acknowledge that aws cloud formation might create some im resources which is fine for me so i'm just going to click on create stack so now look at that a stack has been created and right now its state is create in progress so right now my stack is getting created so you will be getting um, 
all these events like what is happening right now for example my rest api on api gateway was created successfully it is showing its status as create complete and right now my sample lambda rule is getting created so in this way the resources are getting provisioned look at that everything is complete almost sample api deployment was completed so you can just click on this refresh button to see what is what is going on right and look at that finally my stack was completed so finally all the resources are there so you can just go to the resources section and as we can see all these resources have been created what all resources have been created um that permission to invoke lambda from the api gateway the sample api uh, which is my api gateway rest api then the sample api deployment sample api method and then the sample lambda the lambda function that also got created and the log group for my lambda function and the role execution role of my lambda function so it is very simple and everything got created in just one click which is quite uh, which is very very good feature if you have to deploy a lot of aws resources for making a particular application right so now we are just going to test if everything is working fine or not so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to api gateway i'm going to open api gateway so in api gateway we have this sample which just got created and in the sample here you can see that the method got created and in the stages our test stage got created so in the test stage this is the invoke url so let me just open it look at that we are getting hello world so why are we getting hello world i think we are getting hello world because in our template we have specified that the body of the response will be hello world only so that's why you're getting the response as hello world so it means that we successfully created our api so yeah so in this way you can use cloud formation to easily model and provision your cloud infrastructure resources i hope you understood the concept if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching